G'day guys and welcome to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today we're doing something a little bit different to the usual format. Uh, I've called up Joycey on Skype and I want to get his direct opinion on Ross Lyon getting sacked from Fremantle. So uh, you may be watching this and wondering, why didn't we do this for Brad Scott? Why didn't we do this for Alan Richardson? Yeah. Uh, well, the thing is, Joycey's a very passionate Fremantle fan, so it's good to get the perspective of a fan. So, Joycey, yeah. how are you doing down there in sunny Bunbury, WA? Yeah, pretty good, mate. It's uh, actually not too sunny tonight. It's uh, just bucketing down at the moment. But uh, no, nah, go, going all good. Thank you, Jesse. What about yourself? Yeah, good, man. It's absolutely pissing down here. I'm hoping yeah. the mic's not pissing that up too much. But uh, yeah. Good uh, on, good YouTube weather. Just curl up. Uh, watch the Truth Water YouTube channel. So you might have guessed. I want to know what you're thinking as a Fremantle fan in response to Ross Lyon getting his sack out. Oh, sorry, getting sacked. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, those are two separate incidents. That happened last year. That was at the photocopy hour, right? I thought we moved past that. Um, yeah, it's it's been pretty pretty crazy, like 48 hours at Frio. Um, initial reaction was, to be honest, that I wasn't that surprised. Something was probably going to happen eventually, the way things were going. You can't just keep, keep churning out performances like that and... Um, and let the coach stick around. So honestly, I wasn't that surprised. You know, it's always a mixture of emotions when a coach goes because there's part of you that's like a little bit like, I wouldn't say devastated, that's a bit much, but a little bit like depressed, like that I guess things didn't work out with that coach. And and at this point in time, the club's probably seen to be in not a very good position. But there's also a bit of excitement, you know, you never know who's going to come in, whether, what sort of football they're going to play, you know, you could get a coach that wants to play really attacking, attractive football, um, new new lineups, new position changes, so yeah, there's a lot to be excited about as well. I've heard some people on Talkback Radio describe it as probably the biggest day in Fremantle's history, uh, because yeah. they dropped their CEO at the same time. Yeah. Um, what do you think about that? Do you think it's a I, I really big deal? I think that's a bit of an overstatement, to be honest. Um, I think the day they sacked Mark Harvey and hired Ross was, was bigger than this. Mm. Um, you know, that was, I think that was a little, that was almost felt like at the time more than just hiring a coach. It was kind of like a statement from the club that they wanted to be taken seriously. I think Rossich and, and Ross, um, they were always sort of came as a duo. So to be honest, it really didn't come as a surprise to me that um, they both happened to go at the same time. Do you think it was a fair dismissal of Ross Lyon? I know you've, you've sort of expressed your thoughts on the podcast before, but yeah. looking back on it now, his performance in the last couple of years, do you think it was fair that he got the sack? Look, I, I do. I do think it's fair that he got the sack. Um, you know, we're in a results-based industry. It's a cliche, but it's true. Uh, wins and losses is the most important thing when it comes down to it. To go 2017, eight wins. 2018, eight wins. This year, maybe one more win. It's just not not good enough. I know we've had injuries and there's other excuses you can make, but when it comes down to it, you know, the results just weren't good enough. Yeah. yeah. What's your opinion? Yeah, so like when you say it like that, four wins, eight wins, eight wins, nine wins. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the improvement's there. But when you think about it as well, they're probably still going to finish 13th this year. Yeah. So against the rest of the competition, have Fremantle really improve? You know, they've had two really good off seasons in a row, which I think is a credit yeah. to them. But they're going to have to have another good one this year in particular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just if you cast your mind back to uh, to 2015, Fremantle makes the prelim. Ross Lyons obviously considered one of the best coaches in the AFL at the time. Yep. It makes the ruthless decision to cut the list aggressively yep. uh, because yep. on the back of 2016, you guys finished bottom four. I think yep. halfway through the year, you guys kind of decided, nah, screw it. Let's just yep. turn the list over. I, I had, retrospectively, do you think that was a good call? Oh, it's so hard to say. First of all, I'm not really someone that believes you can look back and make you know list changes like that because there's just so many outcomes that could happen. If If you're asking me to make a decision... I personally do believe that was the right call. Mm. I think the players that we had at the time, Mzungu, DeBoer, Subin, Chris Main, um, although he, he, he has gone on to become a good player at Collingwood, but you know the list was getting a bit stale. Something definitely had to happen. 
I think that was the right call personally. What about yeah. you? Yeah, fair enough. Um, I guess the reason I kind of like hang that question out there was because I think the way the game's going now, uh, particularly yeah. for interstate teams who re- recruit a lot of Victorian kids, that yeah. it's becoming so risky to go the whole slash and burn rebuild. Um, yeah. So I think that there's going to be more and more cases where teams try and follow the model of Geelong, Hawthorne and to an extent West Coast, where yeah. they try and rebuild on the fly, get the kids in yeah. while they're still playing well. Um, yeah. So I just wonder if if Ross Lyon kind of um, had his days numbered when he decided to, you know, slap the list in half, yeah. go hard for draft picks, because yeah. we're less and less patient, I think, as um, as supporters yeah. of the AFL. There's yeah. corporate considerations. Fremantle were one of the biggest clubs. They so were like a top four club financially like uh, three or four yeah. years ago. Yeah. And like we were talking about today, they're probably, they've slung back to the middle of the pack now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I wonder retrospectively if they had gone about it a little bit differently, would Ross still have a job? I don't know. It's too, it's too early to tell, like, if, yeah. if they made the right call. Yeah. yeah but no. um, what about this off-season, man? So, like, the one theory I had potentially was there's been a lot of talk how Tim Kelly prefers the Eagles or there's a lot of innuendo about it. he doesn't want to yeah. go to Fremantle. Um, yeah. But one theory I had was that maybe – because one, the th- one of the theories, not my theory, was that he didn't like Russ Lyon and that's why he didn't yeah. want to go there. So, yeah. I mean, there could be a big positive here where um, – where Tim Kelly might be like, oh, new coach, new system, new philosophy. Peter Bell's running yeah. a tight ship over there. Um, yeah. Do you think there might be the benefit? You might be more likely to get Kelly? Um, yeah, it's so hard to say without without knowing his 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 real decision. You know, um, the one thing I will say about Ross is he is very divisive. So people either seem to love him or they hate him. So that and. I've got no no doubts that there's some players in the AFL that would probably, I think, I would hate to play for that guy. Um, so Shane who knows? Kirsten. Maybe, yeah, Shane Kirsten for one. Um, <laughs> although I think Ross did extend his career in the AFL by a good two or three years, so he should probably be thanking him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> good call. But good call. Uh, you know, he is a very divisive guy. So who knows? You know, if if that's going to help Kelly come on board, then you know. <laughs> It, it, it's a good thing. But I will say this for Ross, for every player that there's rumours that they hated him, there's also a player that absolutely loves and adores him. Um, a lot of those ex-Saints, Guns, like Nick Rewalt, Lee Montagna, uh, Lenny Hayes, Nick Del Santo, they all have nothing but great things to say about Ross. I think the veterans at Fremantle, it's pretty obvious, they all really really liked playing for him. You know, we saw Sonny Walters. He's spoken a lot of times about how Ross turned his career around. I think it's because Ross, he is quite old school. He's very hard-nosed. Um, and, yeah, you can understand how maybe if he doesn't like you, it would be probably pretty hard to to uh, get along with him. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, those are good points. Those are good points. I found it yeah. quite quite weird that Mickey Walters said that uh, it was he was the best person he'd ever met Ross Lyon yeah. which I thought yeah. like I mean whatever your thoughts on Ross Lyon are like even just the way he talks to the media you kind of get that real vibe that he's a bit of a dickhead I mean it, not saying he wasn't a yeah. good coach but you know he's got that real vibe about him sometimes and to say for someone to say he's the best person he'd ever met that's um that's quite an endorsement but do you think Lyon's going to coach again um, and if he does will it be as soon as next year honestly my immediate thoughts are no, he won't. I think there's a lot of people saying that he's got a lot of years left. I think he could definitely go into one of those sort of um, director or director of coaching, you know, mentor type roles. I think he's arguably more suited to that than he is as a head coach. He's very good at building philosophy. You know, he's very good at driving a strong team culture. Um, a disciplined team culture. Yeah, so I, th- I think he could definitely go into a role like that. Do I think I'll see him as a head coach? Probably not, no. I think he's, he, he's maybe proven to be not so adaptable. He knew his game plan from the start and he's stuck to that from day one and he hasn't really changed with the times. So that's probably, probably something that definitely ended up going against him at Fremantle as well. Yeah, that's a good answer. I uh, yeah. I was thinking today how weird it would be for Ross Lyon to be an assistant again. I don't think he could do it. Like, you know, yeah. you have to take a step back. Yeah, I couldn't yeah, see yeah. it. So, Imagine. But I, 
the director of coaching thing, I could definitely see. That's a really good yeah. answer. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess one thing before we move on, man, like what do you as a Fremantle fan want to see from this off season? Uh, this talk of Brad Hill leaving. Ned yeah. Langdon seems like he's out the door if you believe reports. Yeah. Um, so, so assuming, you know, you're probably going to lose those two guys, what do you want to see and what direction do you want the club to take? Look, I think um, the position we're in at the moment, it would it would hurt to lose those two for draft picks, even if they were really high draft picks, which in Brad Hill's case, I'm sure we could probably get a top five pick for him on the, just about on the trade table straight up. But... You know, the position the club's in where we're sort of three three years into a rebuild, we really need mature, established player. We've definitely seen that's been our trade strategy. Draft sort of, you know, under 25s from WA or trade, sorry, for under 25s from WA. You know, Matera, McCarthy, Kirsten, all of those guys. So I'd like to see us maybe target mature players more. I'd like to think we're still in with a chance of keeping Brad Hill. You know, he's a club He's a club legend, even though he's only been here for maybe three or four years. I think he's really highly thought of. So it would really hurt to lose him. Ed Langdon as well, you know, he's he's got his doubters and sometimes I'm a doubter of him, but he's still pretty young, you know. He could be a really good player in like two or three years' time. What do you think Fremantle's I, trade strategy should be? I totally agree with you. I think uh, mature players has got to be the way to go. I think... Mm-hmm. It occurred to me, you know, if Russ Lyon was still the coach next year and Brad Hill walked out the door and Ed Langdon worked out, walked out the door and you didn't get anyone back in, he's probably going to get sacked within 10 weeks anyway. Yeah. One name that popped up in the in the paper today was um, Blake Akers. I know I know you're not necessarily the biggest fan of him, but I think in terms of a Langdon replacement, that's a start. Yeah. Um, you got to, plan A would be Kelly, but, you know, you can't, you yeah. can't force him. You know, he might not want to go to Fremantle, we don't know. So, I mean, you might get a top five pick, like you say, but then you'd really, I think you should probably be offering that pick five to, to try yeah, and get in a, a I WA agree. gun. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I really could see us attempting to trade Brad Hill for, for Kelly or like a Jack Martin. Uh, something, yes. Something like that, yeah. Jack, Mar- Jack Martin and Blake Akers to replace Hill and Langdon wouldn't be the worst case scenario if you couldn't get Kelly. I yeah. Reckon. No, I agree. Anyway, Matt, last question, um, which is probably one of the most important questions I've got to ask. Do you have anyone in mind to replace Lyon next year? Look, I think the obvious choice is definitely Justin Longmuir. There's there's no doubt about that at the moment. You know, he's got plenty of experience and experience at successful clubs. I remember when he first went to West Coast Eagles, he did a, an interview on the radio and he said he really didn't realise how small Fremantle the mentality of the club was until he went and coached at West Coast. So he does have that experience at successful clubs, but he's also like being a Fremantle player at heart. Um, I think he would that would help him with his affinity to the fans. Um, he would definitely be very strongly supported. I think you know you only hear positive things, but again, I don't I don't know the guy. I hope the club just does its really strong due diligence process. The one thing probably going against Longmuir is that he is a defensive coach and I think Fremantle fans really want to see a change in game style. I think that's one of the things that really went against Ross Lyon. So I think if if Justin Longmuir was to continue that defensive game style and state that in an interview, I think that would definitely count against him. Mm. Um, so hopefully being at someone like Collingwood who last few years have been a really attacking, counter-attacking attractive football team to watch her hopefully if he was to come on board he would have gathered a bit of that another pretty obvious choice is Peter Sumic a little bit like Ross Lyon in that very divisive guy he's got a lot of a lot of haters out there in the AFL community but you can't really argue with the guy's CV in my opinion um, again he's been an assistant coach um, at what two or three different clubs, successful clubs as well. One of the best, arguably under 18s WA coaches in recent times. You know, just a raft of experience in that senior assistant coaching role. So you know, he he does have a strong resume. They're probably the two. You know, they're the two obvious choices, aren't they? Yeah. Um, you know, you, you could see Brad Scott. I guess I, I I wouldn't love that personally. I think he's been. Um, sort of had 10 years to do something at the Roos and never could quite get it going. I don't think he's he's proven that he can really rebuild a list. Brett Ratton, he's another one that's getting thrown around. You know, 
Um, again, a wealth of knowledge, wealth of experience. Scott Burns, even, he's been at Hawks. Anyone that does an apprenticeship under Clarkson is highly thought of in the AFL community. We know how many, you know, hard week and beverage, both two two of probably the better coaches in the league, arguably. Premiership winning coaches, both did apprenticeships under Clarkson. Yeah, Simpson too. Yeah, Simpson as well. So there you go. So I think Hawks do have a really, really strong record there. So yeah, he's probably another one that I think his name would get thrown into the ring. Yeah. yeah. What about yourself? Who do you think the obvious choices are at the moment? I think you summed up all of those really well. Uh, the Longmere one's an interesting one because uh, I think there's there's sort of a romance about getting a free man or boy back in the club. Um, yeah. You know, form, former player. Um, he's sort of a not an icon as such, but you know, he's like yeah, it's more like a Fremantle person. Ross Lyon was maybe never a yeah. Fremantle person. Yeah. Uh, even Rossich was a West Coast CEO before, wasn't he? So, uh, or yeah. not CEO, um, whatever he was. Yeah. That being said, like I, I think back to when Wusha left the Eagles and. Um, we interviewed Simo and Sumich, I think, were the last two. And you could have made the argument Sumich was the, the Eagles boy, um, mm. the guy to get back and be the face of the yeah. club. And we ended up going with the untried Simpson, um, yeah. a, Clarks, a Clarkson understudy as well. And, you know, he's turned out to be, you know, almost right. as good as Malthouse so, uh, in, in yeah. terms of our history. So yeah. I definitely see the other argument for it as well. So. Yeah, interesting times, man, and uh, I'm looking forward to see how it pans out. It's good to get your thoughts. I know we have a, a few Fremantle subscribers um, who will be interested. I know Bruce, in particular, from the Discord, loves to hear anything anti the Ross Lion, but it's good to get a more neutral <laughs> perspective on things. This was fun, man, and uh, yeah. we should we should do more videos like this for the channel as well. Keep you involved. Uh, Definitely. Like- you're down there in Bunbury. So yeah. hopefully the Dockers get up this week. We're doing the live stream for Port and Frio this week, I reckon. Awesome. We're going to try. So uh, we'll awesome. see you there, maybe. <laughs> yeah, anything could happen in that game. So I know. definitely be interesting on the live stream. And um, I'll be uh, in the in the chat for sure, asking Sas- lots of questions. So Sasquatch everyone, Frio. Ma- yeah, everyone make sure you uh, ask guys a few questions. You know, ask Busher about his favorite coffee spots and everything around Frio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is the great man's birthday today as well yeah that's right so happy birthday busher as well yeah he doesn't watch this um <laughs> nah cool guys all right thanks for watching if you are new to the true footy youtube channel make sure you hit subscribe uh tune in on sunday as we watch port and frio go head to head uh, it's going to be an amazing last day of the season so all right i think bye for now see you Joyce. cheers guys it's yeah. been real, been real. Gotcha.